Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Theological Leftovers. We have been looking at the Book of Concord. I think the best part of the Book of Concord, arguably, even I have to argue with myself on this one, but the large catechism is the best. It really is. And we have been looking at that section where Luther talks about the Lord's Prayer. We've looked at the introduction and the first and second petitions or things that we ask for. This is the third petition, which has to do, we pray that God's will would be done, thy will be done. And um, what I've been doing is not trying to provide a lot of explanation, but just reading my favorite parts and encouraging you to grab a hold. You can find this online if you have trouble, let me know. But grab a hold of a copy of the Large Catechism, read along with me, and uh, just marvel over how wonderful this, these insights are. And, um, and let me know what your favorite part is. Or if you hear my favorite part and and uh, you have thoughts or comments or questions about it, uh, to let me know. If you're somebody who's just going to kind of listen and not not take me up on that offer, which is the majority of you, then um, then at least share it with somebody. You hear something good, you got to pass it on. you got to share it. You know there is somebody that is struggling with prayer. You know that there is somebody struggling with the, the will of God and uh, understanding it better this is something you can share with them. So please consider doing that. Now, as I said, I've been reading my favorite parts today. Uh, I'm not going to do that because the, the petition, the explanation of the third petition is really pretty short. I'm just going to read the whole thing to you. So again, if you have it, follow along because it'll mean a whole lot more. But this is awesome. May your will come about on earth as in heaven. Luther writes, Thus far we have prayed that God's name may be hallowed by us, and that his kingdom may prevail among us. These two points embrace all that pertains to God's glory and to our salvation, in which we appropriate God. (laughs) Let me say that again. In which we appropriate God with all his treasures. Got to pause there. Doesn't sound like there's much more to pray about, does it? We just appropriated God with all of his treasures. Ah, keep reading. But, Luther writes, there is just as great need for us to keep firm, pardon me, to keep firm hold on these two things and never to allow ourselves to be torn from them. In a good government, there is need not only for good builders and rulers, but also for defenders, protectors, and vigilant guardians. So here also, although we have prayed for what is most necessary for the gospel, for faith, and for the Holy Spirit, that he may govern us who have been redeemed from the power of the devil, we must also pray that that God cause his will to be done. If we try to hold these treasures, he's talking about the first two petitions, if, if we try to hold these treasures fast, we will have to suffer an astonishing number of attacks and assaults from all who venture to hinder and thwart the fulfillment of the first two petitions. There are people, the devil leading them, who are trying to hinder and thwart the fulfillment of the first two petitions. Hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come. He says we're going to have to be ready for an astonishing number of attacks if we're going to, attacks if we're going to hold these treasures fast. And, and that's the context for this petition, may your will come about on earth as in heaven. Okay? Keep going. Luther writes, For no one can believe how the devil opposes and obstructs their fulfillment. He cannot bear to have anyone teach or believe rightly. It pains him beyond measure when he lies and abo- when his lies and abominations honored under the most specious pretexts of God's name are disclosed and exposed in all their shame when they're driven out of people's hearts and a breach is made in his kingdom, the devil's kingdom. Therefore, like a furious foe, he raves and rages with all his power and might, marshalling all his subjects and even enlisting the world and our own flesh as his allies. For our flesh is in itself vile and inclined to evil, even when we have accepted God's word and believe it. The world, too, is perverse and wicked. Here the devil stirs things up, feeding and fanning the flames in order to impede us, put us to flight, cut us down, and bring us once again under his power. This is his only purpose, desire, and thought. And for this end, he strives without rest day and night, using all the arts, tricks, methods, and approaches 
that he can devise. Wow, this is what we're up against, right? Even, even after these first two petitions have, have God has graciously um, answered and responded to, and he's given us everything that is his, even after all that, this, this is how the devil responds and reacts, right? Therefore, Luther writes, we would be Christians, we who would be Christians must surely expect to have the devil with all his angels and the world as our enemies and must expect that they will inflict every possible misfortune and grief upon us. For where God's word is preached, accepted, or believed, and bears fruit, there the holy and precious cross will also not be far behind. And let no one think that we will have peace. Rather, we must sacrifice all we have on earth. Possessions, honor, house and farm, spouse and children, body and life. Now this grieves our flesh and the old creature, for it means that we must remain steadfast, suffer patiently whatever befalls us, and let go whatever is taken from us. Therefore, there is just as much need here as in every other case to ask without ceasing, Dear Father, your will be done, and not the will of the devil or of our enemies, nor of those who would persecute and suppress your holy word or prevent your kingdom from coming. And grant that we may bear patiently and overcome whatever we must suffer on its account, so that our poor flesh may not yield or fall away through weakness or sloth. Observe that in these three petitions, we have needs that concern God himself in a very simple form. And yet everything has been for our sake. What we pray for concerns only ourselves and that is mentioned above. We ask that what otherwise must be done without us may also be done in us. Just as God's name must be hallowed and his kingdom must come even without our prayer, so must his will be done and prevail even though the devil and all, and all his hosts bluster, storm, and rage furiously against it in their attempts to exterminate the gospel utterly. So God's name is holy. God's kingdom has come. And his will is going to be done despite the whole world and the devil raging against him. We know that even without our prayers. We've, we've been saying this all along. But, Luther writes, we must pray for our own sake so that his will may be done also among us without hindrance, in spite of their fury, so that they may accomplish nothing and we may remain steadfast against all violence and persecution and submit to the will of God. Such prayer must be our protection and defense now to repulse and vanquish all that the devil, bishops, tyrants, and heretics can do against our gospel. And then, this is my favorite part. Let them all rage and try their worst. Let them plot and plan how to suppress and eliminate us so that their will and schemes may prevail. Against them, a simple Christian or two, armed with this single petition, shall be our bulwark, against which they shall dash themselves to pieces. We have this comfort and boast, that the will and purpose of the devil and of all our enemies shall and must fail and come to naught, no matter how proud, secure, and powerful they think they are. For if their will were not broken and frustrated, the kingdom of God could not abide on earth, nor his name be hallowed. I love it. Let them rage. Let them try their worst. Let them plot and plan how to suppress and eliminate us so that their will and scheme may prevail. Against them, a simple Christian or two, armed with this single petition, shall be our bulwark against which they shall dash themselves to pieces. The Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. I read the whole thing to you. Um, interested in what you think, what was your favorite part in all of this, let me know. And if you heard something good here, share it, share it, like it and share it. Um, not to stroke my ego. I, I don't even know who's doing what. So that's not the reason, but but it, it gets the word out. 
Um, it's a way without spending money that we can get the word out. So, so I encourage you to do that. Um, and I also encourage you, and even more importantly, I encourage you to remember um, that this coming Sunday, God meets his people to give them the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Go to church. Um, if you don't have a church home, you're in the Evansville area. Come to Concordia. Christ will be here with his gifts. 1030, the divine service begins. And you are invited before that at 9 o'clock. Um, that's when we have our Bible study. Currently, we are talking about um, we're talking about how to share Christ crucified and raised with the people in our lives. Um, so you're invited to join us as we talk more about that. God bless you all, and God bless your week.